Hello everyone. Welcome to my creative world where I've been doing some testing with the new villager trading mechanics in 1.4. I didn't really know exactly how this was going to work and there didn't seem to be a lot of information on it so I did some research and hopefully this might be of interest to you. In 1.3 you could really exploit the villager trading. You could take this guy here and you could give him I don't know 150,000 stacks of wheat and you could get tons of emeralds that way. Now you could do that in one trade if you wanted to. If you set up some sort of dispenser system as I did in Nelda I got a bunch of emerald blocks because I set up a dispenser system and traded paper but you can't do that anymore. However, I want to show you a way that you can still get a decent amount of emeralds from one of these guys without cracking, uh, without breaking a sweat and without you know, losing your mind. So here we have Iron Farmer and let's see what trades this guy has. This guy has, he's got cooked fish, uh, we can buy bread, we can buy raw chicken, or we can sell wheat, we can buy shears, we can buy apples, we can buy flint conversion, we can get some cookies, wool for an emerald, buy some melons, sell some raw chicken, oh that was cooked chicken like that, buy a flint and steel, and arrows. Okay, so this guy has a wheat trade and he has a wool trade, which is good because that's what I want to show you. Um, okay, this guy has 21. I think this, this this farmer behind me actually has better trades, so I want to show you him. He's got 18 wheat for an emerald. And he also has 14 wool. Okay, so right now he's willing to do both of those trades. So let me just clear my inventory of emeralds and I shall show you what happens. Uh, get rid of this. Alright. So we can give him emeralds, uh, um, wool for emeralds, but he only wants to do the trade once. Okay. So now. Now he won't want to do the wheat, the um, the wool trade anymore. If we scroll over here. Oh. Did I not do that properly? Okay, he still wants to do it. Let's get some more of him. I believe he won't want to do any more. No, he still does. Wow. Okay. I found that you can get about 14 emeralds from one of these guys before they will stop trading with you. Um, let me get some more wool here. Blocks. Okay, so he still wants to do it. Let's get some more. Got 13. And. I think we have 17. Okay. So he's let us get 17. And I think that he won't trade with us anymore. Wow. He just keeps him going. Let's have some more then. This is this wasn't how it went down before. I think you could probably tell. I need to stock up on some more wool. This guy's just ridiculous. He just wants to keep doing it. Okay, clearly he doesn't want to do that trade right now, but maybe once we let him stew a little bit. How many trades has this guy got? It's getting silly. One, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 
the max. This is weird. Okay, well, if this happens to you, then that's nice, of course. Um, but if it doesn't, it's not a big problem. So I'm going to trade some wheat. Hopefully he'll lose that trade, and then I can show you what I mean. Okay, so we get this guy here, and we say, Hey, buddy, you want some wheat? He says, Yeah, I want some wheat. So we say, Sure. Let's trade. Come on. Give me that emblem. Nope. Okay. He's done. So I don't think he'll get his particles again. And then. Does he not want to do it anymore, or does he still want to do it? Oh, we. Okay, I'm using this fax pure BD craft. I wanted to show you this texture pack because I really like it. Um, I love how these villager guys just look like Jawas. It's just I find it hysterical. Anyway, for some reason they're a bit silly. So let me just change my texture pack, and I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. We can now see that this guy doesn't want to do the wheat trade anymore. We put something in, we don't get any emeralds. Okay, so you're in a position, you've got a lot of wheat, but you don't have much wool. This is what you do. One emerald. We only spent 14 wool, I think. Let's see if he'll let us trade wheat now. Oh, yes. Let's get some more emeralds off this guy. Okay, so he doesn't want to trade anymore. Has he lost that trade now? Yes. Okay, so we traded some wheat. Um, and now we've got to trade some wool to get that trade back again. So we go back to the wool. And for some reason, he doesn't want to just tell us that we can get our mouse for it. Okay. These particles come again, and bam, we can do the wheat again. Alright, so that's how you can trade for as many emeralds as you want. Now, I want to show you some of this other stuff that I've been thinking about. Um, these little boxes that I've made here are kind of like villager trading cells. Um, I just get you know, four priests together and trade with them until they all have all the trades or until they have loads of trades. This is four blacksmiths. This took a long time to get everybody's trade here. Um, basically what you do is if you want um, all of a given villager's trades, let's say this, these librarians here, this guy, is that a librarian? No. Where's a librarian? Okay, so if we want him to increase his number of trades, we have to trade with it, right? So we trade with him for a bookshelf. This is your startup capital. You have to do this to get the trades that you want, right? So with a librarian, we want a nice paper trade. And I think that the best one to reset the trade with would be the written book, because you only need one of them, and you can make loads of written books pretty easily. If you get a looting sword and you attack the um, the squid with a looting sword and you have a bit of a chicken farm and so on. Okay, so he hasn't given us another trade yet. Let's trade with him again. I find it takes between one and four trades to get them to give you a new one until they get to like the last couple. Um, there's no maximum to villager trading uh, except for the maximum number of different trades that each type of villager can do. So the blacksmith can do 26 trades. Okay, now he wants a written book. So we go and we get a written book. Uh, I need one of these. I need one of these. I need... Where would the books be? I've got no idea. I need one of these. 
and maybe one of these. Is there a shape to this thing? No, there isn't. So I didn't even need a crafting table. Okay, so we go in the book, and we write now. Done. Sign. Sign and close. Okay, it's a written book. Let's see what he wants, what he thinks about it. Grab my emerald off him. Okay, he's given us three trades now. So we buy the clock. And hopefully he'll give us a new one. Okay, we buy it. No, that's not the same one. I thought we only had one librarian here. Oh, it must be the same one. Okay. Get another clock. Thank you. There we go. Some glass. So we can do this and increase the number of trades up to the maximum number of different types of trading that the villager you're interested in can do. So for the librarian, I think it's like 12 or something like that. Not exactly sure. I didn't check. The blacksmith I know is 26. And the blacksmith is a bit of a problem, which I shall go into in a moment. So as you can see, he's increasing the number of trades. Eventually we'll get both of the trades that we want. Paper and um, written books. And then we can make the big blocks. Um, the reason I have four villagers here is this is what I recommend you do. Trade with one, trade with the next one, trade with the next one, trade with the next one. Eventually you'll get two. Uh, you'll get one who has a decent price on the things that you want. So with blacksmith it doesn't matter too much, but for something like selling wheat and wool or selling books and paper, those librarians can be really stingy or they can be nice. Like the lowest paper trade I think is 19. If you get a guy that's 19 to 21, that's really nice. If you get a guy that's 26, you throw him away. So that's why I've got four guys here. You get four, you get four librarians, and you trade with each of them in turn until one of them has a decent price on both of the commodities that you want to trade. Now, there is a caveat, which is why I'm here with the blacksmiths. Uh, where's this guy? This guy has all the trades that the blacksmith can do, which is 26. One, two. Whoops, uh, my mouse double clicks sometimes. Uh, it's all the time actually, it's really really annoying. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Okay, so he's got all the trades. All 26. Um, you can buy chainmail with him, um, from him repeatedly. So he's a renewable source of chainmail. And you can buy every type of chainmail. There's the helmet, there's the chest plate, and we've got the boots there. And there's some pants here somewhere. There they are. Okay, so here's the problem with these blacksmiths. To trade with these guys, I think I used about 27 stacks of emeralds. So blacksmiths are expensive, particularly if the blacksmith that you're trading with already has 22 trades and you want to get the last four. I don't know why, but the last three or four, they seem to want to trade so many times to actually give you a new trade, like this guy. One of his last ones is a chainmail helmet, I think. Yeah. You want to know how many chainmail helmets I got? No, you don't want to know. I, I think I had my whole inventory for chainmail helmets at one point. Diamond picks, I didn't get too many. I think I got about six of those, but these guys, man. And then iron leggings. I had to buy so many iron leggings. And quite a lot of chainmail chest plates as well before he gave me you know, the next one. And then I traded a ton of iron with him, like more than two stacks. And then eventually he gave me the last one. 
just to show that it's possible, right? This is I'm just doing this because I'm in creative. In survival, you would never really bother doing this. So this guy has all the trades. I think a couple of these guys have all the trades. So you can get if you got yourself four blacksmiths. Um, you know that's a really useful thing if you want to wear chainmail armor. So one of them might give you boots and leggings, one of them might give you a helmet and chest plate, and then you're done, right? You don't have to trade with any of them anymore. You don't have to waste any more emeralds. So the way that you get your startup capital for these guys is you trade with the farmers or particularly the, the librarians. I think the librarians are still the best ones to trade with. These priests I was just testing a little bit uh, because they do enchantments. Uh, efficiency 2 efficiency 3 but they do pretty boring enchantments and to be honest now that we have the anvil um, these guys are pretty useless for this sort of stuff protection 3 okay that's pretty good but you know, just enchant a couple of diamond chest plates you might have to get protection 3 a couple of times and then you can just anvil them together um, so yeah they're, they're yeah, not that useful uh, I saw on the one of the videos from JL75 uh, 2579's server that they had a few of the priests separate because they had really nice enchantment trades. Um, but yeah, now that we get the anvil, I don't think that's really necessary. Okay, you probably heard me say just a moment ago that these priest guys are not that useful. And I'm sorry, I was wrong about that there is something very important that I think you will want to know about these guys. Um, I've never seen this mentioned anywhere, so I'm not sure how widely this is known. I'm sure some people know. There's probably some stuff on the internet about it, but I want to show you these priest guys again. Let me get something that they put. Okay, this guy's got protection of one, and the other guy I poked at has protection a bunch. Oh, they've got a couple. Okay, this guy's projectile protection. So it's easy to see that there's a difference. Let me grab me a diamond chest plate. Okay, so he's got his protection one. We can do that. Protection one. You ready for this? Projectile protection three. So these guys, these these priest villagers, can change the enchantment on your piece of armor. You don't have to destroy it. You don't have to use an anvil. You don't have to mix it with a chest plate which is nearly broken in a repair in your inventory. These guys will give you a chest plate that has an enchantment that you find useful. So, um, let's say that you want protection 4 really badly on your diamond chest plates and you, you've you only got 2. You see where this is going? We buy one from him, and let me get another one. Will that work? <laughs> he does it again. Got two protection threes. Now we can angle them together. Beautiful. Protection four diamond chest plate. And of course, you don't have to do it with them perfectly done. You could wear them down halfway each, and then you could put them together again. Um, no problem at all. So these priest guys, they do have their uses. Um, you just have to decide for yourself whether the the whole you know these guys I traded a bunch of really useless stuff and I enchanted a bunch of pretty useless stuff. Uh, you can reuse the tools that you enchant on another um, priest, and you can even do a trade several times with the same thing. Let me show you. If I get a sword now, and I need some more emeralds because I'm running out. So if we enchant this sword for knockback one, which is like the worst enchantment to have on a diamond sword, 
that's registered as a trade, but this will also be registered as a trade. If we just make him do it again, what? Fire aspect. Okay, so it looks like he gave us a different trade. Um, let's poke at him again. Get sword fire aspect. Yeah, he's only giving us fire aspect now. That's interesting. Maybe it's because it was the last trade. If you do the very last trade, that's how you get a new trade. So, if I wanted this guy to give me more trades, I would have to enchant more swords. In fact, maybe I can show you that very quickly. Let's see if he does it. Wait for his particles. There they are. And I can do it again. As you can see, my emeralds are going down. They are registering. Okay, he's got his stars. Maybe that means that he's got a new trade. No. Come on, give us a new one. Yes, there we go. So we went through. How do we have knockback one and then go fire aspect one? I don't know. Anyway, so it seems that they can change enchantments. And now we got a new trade that he will do. So by that method, you can get loads of different types of um, enchantments that might be hard to achieve by using simple uh, enchanting. Um, but yeah, you have to decide really how useful this is. Um, I, I don't think it's particularly useful. But um, yeah, uh, that's information and I always find it good to know what can be done so that if we ever need to do it, we can do it. Alright, that's it for this bit and then I'll just cut back to the rest of it. Anyway, that's kind of all I wanted to show you in terms of the trading mechanics. Now I want to talk to you a little bit, very, very shortly about the breeding mechanics. In here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 villages. Okay, <coughs> now I told you that I traded with these guys a bazillion times. So I was here for a couple of hours trading with these stupid blacksmiths. And then I spent a bit more time on these farmers and these priests. So I was here for a fair amount of time. And guess how many started off in there? Seven. So the villager breeding now is not broken. It still works, but they breed so slowly that you just can't do the blood emerald thing anymore. That's why I did this whole trading thing because now that you can't dispose of villagers and just get new ones, you kind of have you kind of stuck with the villagers that you've got. So make us one of those villagers, just expand it, get a couple hundred villagers in there, and then just cart them off to your base or something and build yourself a little setup. Uh, where you can trade with them and get them to give you the trades that you want and then you can get your emeralds. Um, yeah, it doesn't, the breeding doesn't seem to uh, depend on how many there are. Occasionally one of them will enter breeding mode and then, then they'll breed. Um, and, but it doesn't seem to like two of them in here are in breeding mode, they don't always produce offspring. It seems to fail most of the time. Um, it's a really strange mechanic. Uh, yeah, so they try to breed and then nothing happens. And then they don't go into breeding mode immediately if there are enough doors. Like, let me show you over here. I've been doing a fair bit of experimentation in this world, as you can see. Um, got four iron, five iron golems here. How many villages do we have? Ooh, we've got a fair amount in here. Sixty entities.
So it looks like we have about 55 villagers in here. I started off with two uh, four hours ago, uh, or actually more than that, some hours ago, because I played around over there quite a long time. Um, so yeah, I don't really know. Like you can see, it's not increasing, right? They're still at 60. Uh, the entity count is still at 60. So you can see all these hearts, and they're all trapped within the one by one space. So if they had to meet up to breed, then they'd be able to do so really easily. We just got an extra one. Um, so it, yeah, I've been doing testing, and it's still not really clear exactly what's going on. Um, it still takes a just an incredibly long time for anything to happen. Let me show you my iron golem test facility over here. I'm going to be doing some more stuff with iron golem farms soon because I think that you can um, make this spawning cell a lot smaller. Um, but I haven't tested that, um, so I'd have to test it to make sure. Um, how many villagers we got in here? 17. Okay, so we have 74 villagers. I know, because I was testing before with a wonderful mod that allows you to tell all about villagers. I'll link it in the description. I know that this village will take up to 81 villagers. And this farm has been, it started off with two in each cell, and I was just going to wait, but it was taking such a long time that I actually placed six more into each cell, so eventually you got basically eight per cell. Um, so if we go from there, this farm has been active for a long time, probably eight or ten hours. And... They haven't even filled up the pop cap yet, so the trade, the the breeding is very, very, very slow. Uh, yeah, I don't really know exactly how it works. It seems to be pretty difficult to work out precisely. Um, one of the things seems to be that the parent who's two parents who have a child don't want to breed for quite a long time. Um, so the more population you have, the faster it'll increase. But also, they seem to have a maximum rate of increase as well for a given village. Mm -hmm. There goes my hard drive again. Um, so, but don't quote me on all of those things. I haven't looked into the code. I don't know anything about it. So um, that's just from observation. That's what it seems to be doing. Um, but yeah, these villages, these doors, by the way, are all um, valid doors. So if you want to increase the size of your village very easily, you can do it this way. Like I did over here. That's pretty much all I wanted to talk about today. These villages, um, these areas here, are all separate villages. So the centers of the towns are far enough apart to be separate villages. And these guys have already spawned five iron golems. Um, oh yeah, that's one more thing. The Iron Golems used to take 16 villagers and 20, at least 21 doors to spawn. Now they take 10 villagers. I found that out from the, the village checking mod as well, which I'll link in the description. I've forgotten its name now, I'm really sorry. But I will link it in the description so you can try it out. It's pretty useful if you're doing testing like this. Although it still doesn't tell me exactly how this breeding mechanic works. Anyway, we don't really need to know. All you need to know is that if you want a lot of villagers and you don't have very many, you're going to have to spend a huge amount of time nearby them so that they'll be in loaded chunks and maybe they will actually breed. Okay, that's all for now. I hope that you found this informative. Um, I felt like I was rambling a bit there, so if I was, please let me know, and I'll try to be a bit more concise next time. But thank you very much for watching, and this is Palladium PD signing out.